Okay, let's take a look at this machine failure phenomenon together. The first problem is that the screen cannot automatically brighten after it dims. Our environment is very bright, but the phone is not automatically adjusted. So we opened its automatic brightness button and tried again. No change for brightness automatic adjustment. So it is a first problem. Let's look at the second problem. There will be three options on a good machine at the bottom of the screen. There will be a button for the true tone display at this position. But on our problem phone, the true tone function is not working. The third problem is rather particular. When this machine arrived at us, its face recognition function was working, but now, let's try. It prompts to keep the face in the viewfinder, it is not working correctly. So let's make a comparison with a sound machine. Let's take a look. It records the face. Please pay attention to this position, a tiny dot flashes continuously, and the fault machine has no flash. See, it is very obviously no flashing thing. Next, I put this problem phone under the microscope, give you a closer look. We first open the face of the recording interface, put it under the microscope. We can see that there is a very faint little light on here. In this position, the light of the distance sensor is flashing. Next, I'll take the excellent machine to make a comparison. Let's look at the excellent machine. We see two lights are on. The first one is the light we just saw, it is the distance sensor, the other one is called the floodlight sensor, it keeps flashing and flashing. Through the comparison just now, we can see in the process of face recording, this problem machine's flood sensor is not working. Next, let's take this machine apart to see what the problem is. After removing the screen, we can see a flex line here. It is a line for the earpiece microphone, light sensor, and flood sensor. I'll take it off next and check in detail. Now we have removed this flex cable. The floodlight sensor and distance sensor assembly are on the left side of our position. This white rectangle is the ambient light sensor. So turn over this flex, what we can see is that this one is the microphone, in this position is the earpiece. Next, let's look under the microscope. Look at this flex cable, see if there are any problems. The motherboard interface position is no problem. Then let's continue to look at this line, here may be scratched but should not be damaged, this line is quite long. So when we get to this position, we can see, here there is a clear broken off see it you should be able to see this position, see, these lines get torn off. So we can now clearly see, this component is the floodlight sensor, then in these two round holes are distance sensor transmission and reception. This white rectangular thing is the ambient light sensor. Then turn it over, and we can see that this is a microphone. And then this part is an earpiece. So through our observation, the problem should be in this flex line. Next, we will replace it with a suitable cable, 
and then to see if we can solve his fault. Next, I use the heating table, remove his flood sensor, let's take a look. Add a small amount of solder oil. The heating table has heated up in advance, it will soon be ready for removal. 3 2 1, ok, once it's off, we'll take off its ambient light sensor. Again with tweezers, gently hold, and it's off. First, I put a little tin on the light sensitive element with a bit of tin. Later, solder directly to the new line. This solder pad is large, so we do not need to plant tin but soldering directly with iron to it. A little on it can be. Okay, it's perfect. Let's take a look at the flood sensor. We can see the tin on the pads is full. Then we do not need to plant tin. If the tin is not complete enough, we need to tin it and then install it. Before installation, I first give it protection measures. The outside of this component, you see, is wrapped in plastic, so the chip is not resistant to high temperatures. When we heat it, it will melt away. Then we use yellow heat insulation tape to do protection, cut it down, and cover it with a layer of insulation tape, so that when we blow it with a heat gun, it will not blow it away. Next, we will assemble the ambient light back. There is a suitable flex cable. We first apply a little bit of solder oil. After that, we put this sensor on top of it. After placing it in a good position, we put it on top of the heating table. After we finish soldering, we look at it under the display mirror, and the welding is solid. Next, we use the heat gun and assemble the floodlight sensor. Two components get soldered along this flex line. I already said at the beginning of the video, the flood sensor. Here it is a component of the face ID assembly. Let's look at the machine again. The flood sensor is not working just now. We see that it doesn't have a purple light flashing. So now we put it on the new cable. Should be working properly. But this face recognition can work or not? I'm not sure. Because in addition to the floodlight sensor, there is this infrared metal head and this dot matrix projection, they are all components of the face ID assembly, if they are not working, or not working properly, the face recognition is still not working properly, so let's install it on the screen, try to see if the face function can be good or not, here I take a new screen, because this user, also want us to give it a replacement for the original screen on, then we will directly install it to have a try. So now the phone is on, let's try, whether its face function has been restored or not. Ok, the familiar voice, we can see in the camera, his floodlight sensor, is already working, can record the face normally. Next, let's try to notice if removing the lock. Ok, no problem. Next. Let's test E1 fourth though is his light sensitivity working well. I turn down the brightness of the screen a little bit, see if he can automatically adjust back. Ok, we can see that the screen can be adjusted automatically, no problem. Then let's look at it again. Is its true tone display typical now? Just before we repair it, there are only two switches in this position. Now, its true tone display turns on, turned off or on without a problem. We can see that the color temperature of the screen is changing, a bit of cold, then if you adjust it again, it will be a little warmer. Well, here it is, we have solved all the problems of this machine, we have repaired the fault of this machine.